name is Will Benyard. I'm a designer and craftsman for WCB Leather Crafts. I've been designing leather craft and WCB Leather Crafts has been in existence since about 1978. I've designed uh, belts, wallets, jewelry, hats, um, uh, a variety of uh, leather products, uh, portfolio cases, uh, briefcases, brief bags, uh, clothing, and uh, I've uh, re restored leather. I've uh, also uh, refurbished leather pro products and uh, Currently, I'm in the process of replacing a zipper in one of my favorite black leather jackets. Uh, the zipper has broken teeth, and uh, actually this is the first jacket I've uh, installed a zipper in. I've installed zippers in bags and cases, but this is the first challenge of uh, installing a, a zipper in a leather jacket. Now. I've sewn uh, clothing before and uh, cloth is a lot more forgiving than leather. Reason being is once you put a hole in leather, it's permanent. Where with fabric, you can take the stitches out and the hole, the weaving of the fabric uh, eliminates the hole. So what I'll show you in this video is the process of taking the zipper out and then installing a new zipper in place of the broken zipper. Now this is the, uh, the industrial sewing machine that I'm going to uh, use to uh, actually sew the new zipper in. It's a machine that I've had for uh, over uh, about 15 years now and I've done all uh, a variety of products of uh, leather craft products and things with this sewing machine it's a very reliable machine uh, and I'm happy that I uh, was able to get my hands on it uh, about a decade and a half ago okay now I'm in the process of uh, removing the zipper from the uh, the jacket and I'm breaking the stitches on the actually it's the, the left side of the jacket and uh, gradually pulling the stitches out as I remove the zipper as you can see uh, the zipper on the left side is actually stitched in a bit different from this the zipper on the right side being that the zipper on the right side has stitches that are shown on the outside of the jacket whereas the zipper on the left side the stitches are actually uh, hidden on the inside of the jacket because it has a flap that covers the right side zipper so the stitch process is more of a, a fold and stitch versus a straight stitch through uh, two pieces of leather it's basically uh, four pieces of leather uh, a seam and then a fold so it's actually uh, a stitch that's going to be uh, hidden so there's no stitches on the outside of the jacket as it is on the right hand outside okay now I've removed the old zipper out of the jacket on the left hand side and the new zipper the silver one for the left hand side will fit in between this seam here and what I've decided to do, instead of initially trying to catch this to this part at the same time, what I'm going to do is stitch this 
to this first. I'm gonna straight stitch up along this piece of leather here. And then once I have it secured up and down this piece here, then I'll stitch the zipper and the piece of leather to this as such. For the left, excuse me, for the right side, when I take this zipper out, it'll be, and put the new zipper in, what it'll be is just a straight stitch to both sides of the zipper at the same time. Okay, now I'm gonna, um, I'm working on the right hand side zipper and I'm removing that zipper and you'll notice that there's two rows of stitching that's holding the zipper in and what I'm doing is breaking one row in segments at a time I'm working the stitch breaker upward and separating that first row of zippers and then I'm coming down and separating the second row that way by doing it each row in its own segment I don't inadvertently break the leather or puncture the leather okay now you'll see that both all zippers have been removed and the new zippers will be sewn in what I'll do is uh, with leather you can't pin them in because the pins leave holes in leather so what I'll end up doing is either taping them in taping the zippers in temporarily or clip them in with uh, these little clips in spaces as I go along and then removing these clips as I stitch okay now I'm starting to uh, fit the uh, right side of the uh, zipper into the jacket and I've decided to use uh, double-sided tape to just uh, get it in position so that uh, the zipper actually lines up and I'll be able to do a straight stitch uh, following the uh, zipper line and the stitch previous stitch line so what I'm doing is just putting down the uh, double-sided tape in sections and I may remove the tape as I get to it with the uh, sewing machine and then again I may just stitch over it uh, if it doesn't gum up my needle okay now I'm at the point where I have to make a decision whether to clip the zipper in with these clips here or to tape with uh, double sided tape or to glue with adhesives I believe what I'm going to do is clip the front and glue the back and then after the glue sets I'm going to stitch okay I'm still uh, installing the zipper into the jacket on the right hand side and I decided to use uh, an adhesive my leather adhesive to go ahead and tack the, the zipper into the jacket uh, it's contact cement which means that it's uh, you put it on each both sides to be glued give it a few seconds to, to dry become tacky 
and then you press it down and it adheres. Uh, once it's set, uh, then you can stitch. Uh, once it's once it's dry, uh, after 24 hours or so, it's not too bad where it would uh, gum up your uh, your sewing needle. Okay, what we have now is the zipper has been glued in on both sides, front and back of the zipper. We're going to let it sit for the glue to cure for about 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and stitch. Take these clips off and stitch the front row that's closest to the zipper teeth and then the back row. We'll do a straight stitch, black thread, um, and follow the stitch line that's already in the jacket. After we get those two lines of stitching in, then we'll go onto the left side and do this something similar. It won't be the same because, as I said before, there's a flap that covers the zipper on this side so there will be no stitching on the outside as it is on the right side. There will be a straight stitch that will hold the zipper in and then there will be a fold straight stitch as a secondary stitch to hold the left side of the zipper in. Um, that's going to be a little bit tricky but uh, uh, I'll be able to do it. Okay, now we're in the next phase of uh, sewing this zipper in. And uh, now I'm at the sewing machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew the outside, the right side of the zipper in that I glued up 24 hours ago. But first, I'm going to make a I need to make a bobbin to, uh, to go along with this thread, some black thread. Also, what I always suggest before you start stitching on your finished leather pro project is to get a sample piece of leather and check your stitches. You can change the length of your stitches, which I believe I have to make these stitches a little bit smaller. You notice I'll ha I have a zipper foot on that I actually did a zipper on uh, a cloth jacket a couple weeks back and I'm just going to leave that. I've left that on because it's a narrow foot and it's good for getting around uh, corners and narrow spaces so I'll just I've just left this on and I definitely need it for for this job here so the first thing I'll do is make a make a bobbin got a blank bobbin here empty bobbin that I'll make that will fit into this uh, this bobbin holder. Currently there's gray thread in here and I'll make the bobbin, do some test stitches on this scrap piece of leather when I'm satisfied with the length of the stitches on the scrap then I'll start stitching on the uh, start stitching the zipper in to the jacket. Okay, I changed the uh, thread in my bobbin. I now have uh, black thread uh, in my bobbin and my top stitch thread. I checked my stitches and uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, the length of the stitch on the top and the back. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and prepare to uh, sew the zipper in. First I'll remove these clips that have been holding uh, the zipper on now while the glue is setting for the last 24 hours. Uh, one thing you need to be careful about when you use clips or anything that's going to apply pressure to leather, you have to make sure that there's not too much pressure applied or else it will leave uh, <laughs> a permanent mark. I like these, these clips because they're not too, too tight. 
also uh, if the leather was wet when you put a, uh, a clamp or an impression on it or if it's damp it's even more difficult to get that that impression off so what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and work from the top of this stitch from the top of the, the zipper down to the bottom and I'll go ahead and stitch stay on the uh, previous stitch holes and begin the stitch thing to remember is steady and slow and also what I did a couple days ago to ensure that uh, to help ensure that I wouldn't miss stitches I tightened up the belt that drives the flywheel so that uh, it will continue to, to move the needle up and down as the bobbin below moves okay best way to start is to lower the needle down into the leather and then slowly apply the pressure as you guide as you guide the the material or the leather through now it makes it easier because there's already a a stitch line that's left from the previous stitching that was here before I pulled the old zipper out also remember that if you're going to move do any adjusting to the leather underneath the, the pressure foot that it's best to have the needle down in the leather that way it prevents you from missing a stitch so you just go ahead and continue following your stitch line like right so slow and steady check and see uh, how's it coming that looks pretty good and continue on down the left of the zipper following and staying on the stitch line and if you need to guide the needle down I'm turning the, the flywheel most leather crafts people learn how to sew with one hand on the leather and another hand on the flywheel particularly if you're sewing something thick or something that's going to going to move uh, you can help control the speed and the up and down movement of the needle by controlling the flywheel since this is a straight stitch and the, the leather on this jacket is pretty thin really I don't have to be co too much concerned with controlling the flywheel it's just a force of habit that I have from stitching uh, heavier projects so I'll go ahead and continue stitching down the length of the zipper and then after I reach the bottom I'll go and do a back stitch this is not a uh, a double stitch machine so for my back stitches I usually swing the leather around and and stitch the opposite way and I don't have a, uh, a lever that will allow it to back stitch I just have to swing the material around and stitch again in the other direction okay I'm uh, almost a third of the way down on my first row of stitches and I'll just continue down the nut staying in the stitch line what you can do is you can kind of maneuver the leather so you have the stitch 
coming straight at you. But what I'll do is when I get down to the bottom here, I'll go ahead and uh, move this the slider up past the bottom where I'm stitching. But I, I don't need to do that just yet. Slow and steady. type of thread I'm using is um, heavyweight uh, multi-purpose thread. Most of my um, leather jobs I use a posty thread but uh, that thread is a little bit thicker and leaves a more bulkier stitch so I decided to go ahead and um, utilize the heavyweight multi-purpose thread. Continue to stitch, staying in the stitch line. And now would be a good time to get that slider out the way. Okay. And continue on down. As you get down closer to the end, you just guide with your hand and the feed dog underneath actually pulls the material or the leather away from you. And you just use your hands to actually feed, help feed the material straight into or underneath the pressure foot. Now we're getting close down here. There's some previous uh, thread for the, the old stitching. So now I'm getting close to the bottom. I'll go ahead and take my time gradually. This is where you may want to try to slip on you because see you notice that the foot is rising up so just I didn't break the stitches all the way down here I broke the stitches right to this area here but it's better to go ahead and run on past because what I'm going to do is I set on a back stitch and I'll back stitch right where the zipper ends so there's uh, a little more uh, strength there by having a, a double stitch. Notice how I kept the needle down and now I'll stitch back the other way. See what you do is feed it down and that's your back stitch on a straight stitch machine and then you just gradually ride your flywheel so you can get enough to thread and then you cut it okay now I'm getting ready to, to sew uh, the outer row of stitches and what you want to do is try to move as much of the uh, previous broken stitches as possible before you begin laying down your new stitches what it'll do is make it look a lot cleaner 
and less bulky. Uh, you don't have to worry about any stitches that might be any, you know, a few stitches that might be left behind because uh, you can actually pull those out at a later time if the new stitches does doesn't lay over top of them. I try to clean it up before I, I start stitching. That way when I'm done, it's a done deal. Another thing you want to be cautious about is when you stitching leather, try to <laughs> ensure that you don't have another area of the leather project underneath like a sleeve underneath or something because the last thing you want to do is try to break stitches because the holes are going to be there unlike fabric where you can actually re-sew and the weave of the fabric will actually absorb and cover up the holes Okay, we're getting ready to uh, do this second row. Uh, you always want to give yourself enough slack in your needle thread because once you bring the needle down, it has a tendency to want to pull this thread back out through the needle eye when the take-up lever is, goes up in the up position. So give yourself enough excess bobbin thread is easier to pull. This is a straight pull out from the bottom. And what I'm going to do, same thing, I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. Now I broke the stitches here around the snap. But what I'm going to do is, since I can't sew continuously straight down because the snap is in the way, I'm going to start as close as I can below the snap and work my way down and then after I'm done I'll come back up and do these two rows here actually I'll probably do a back stitch reinforcement here and possibly here I might I might leave that as a single stitch a row of stitches here so what I'll do is The manufacturer more than likely put the zipper in prior to putting the snap in. That way they was able to run a straight stitch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start let my foot down make sure that I've got it in. Okay now uh, I finished the second row of stitching so both uh, rows of stitching are in the zippers in and now what I'm going to do is finish the top part above the snap I'll start here on the inner row this time and come down to the snap and then turn around and go back because I've already got a stitch here on the on the outer uh, row of stitches here so uh, I'll probably do a, a second row as a reinforcement uh, so just start right here above begin another other row as I said before, give yourself enough slack in your needle thread so it doesn't pull back through the eye in your first couple of stitches. You'll notice I'm helping myself by uh, feeding. flywheel through my hands as I stitch. When you 
get to the snap, what you'll have to do sometimes is actually move what's underneath the, the, the pressure foot by hand if it seems not to be moving with from underneath with the uh, the feed dog that's underneath the, the pressure foot. Sometimes that happens when either the material is too thick or there's, there's an obstruction that's uh, preventing the movement of the, uh, the feed dog. Now you'll see here, see how the uh, the pressure foot is sitting up on that snap. This is where I'll guide and I'll steer with my, my left hand until it comes off the pressure foot and bring it back up to the beginning of the first row here. So just let the feed dog underneath pull, pull the leather. Take a look. See where you're at. See the stitch there. Just come on back up. That's it. This here, I'll go ahead and do another uh, stitch on top of that as a second reinforcement to help hold that in. As a matter of fact, what I'll do is uh, probably do it right before the zipper ends. So, and another thing to be cautious of is when you're feeding your uh, leather through to cut your uh, thread, make sure you keep an eye on where the point of the needle is so it doesn't uh, scratch your project. See, here I cut that a little close. So what I'll do is give me some slack from above and pull and guide that. And bring it back down through that excess thread that I've cut out the way. Leading that up here so it doesn't interfere. And then what I'll do is just give me one more row down here on the outer stitch and bring it on up like such. Okay. There you go right there. Bring it on up. Bring it all the way up. That's your second stitch. Like your back stitch. And that completes the right side of the zipper. So it's securely in. Now the challenging part is actually sewing in the left side of the zipper. As I said earlier, is it going to be? I'm going to make it a two-part process. I'm going to sew the zipper to this piece here, like so. Get the zipper in place. Then what I'll do is bring it together with the zipper attached and sew this fold over so that when you open it up, it'll be like that. Making sure that I uh, don't catch anything underneath other than this, this piece here. Okay. I'm back at the uh, setup table, the layout table, and now uh, it's time to put the uh, the left side zipper in. This is the zipper that has uh, the flap on the outside to cover the zippers up when they're closed. So uh, I'll start with the. Uh, Placing temporary placing the, the zipper into the uh, opening uh, between the two pieces of leather. 
I might temporarily use the, uh, the double sided tape to just get the uh, zipper initially uh, in place then come along with the uh, clips and spacedly clip the, uh, the clips in place and then afterwards once I get it to where I like the placement of the zipper I'll slowly remove each clip and the tape and come along and glue in the zipper along the inside here and then after I do that I'll go ahead and let the glue set up then come back and stitch this part like that and then I'll finish up by stitching the zipper and this part here to this part here like so okay now I've got the uh, the zipper clipped in on the uh, outer part of the uh, flap and now I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue it in as I glue I'll gradually um, remove the clips as I work my way up or down the zipper I haven't decided which direction I'm probably going to go from the bottom to the top same way I actually clipped the, the zipper in from the bottom to the top and I've looked it looks like it's about the same amount of uh, space left from the zipper where it goes into the, the catch like so and then it looks we'll see okay here we go right there looks to be about it there let's bring that down here okay it looks to be right there come down here check looks okay and then down to here uh, I'm not certain here I'll just have to gradually work it into place because you can't tell that actually the clips are taking up some of the spacing but right there that looks that's tight so that looks it's pretty good there so I'll just leave the clips in place and go ahead and glue then remove the clips and then after glue sets I'll sew sew it in from this side following the previous stitch stitch line holes and as I said after that's in and secure the zipper secure it to this I'll go ahead and sew this in like so with a slight fold so that when it's open it catches and that lays out okay uh, gradually uh, applying glue between the zipper and the outside piece here removing the clips as I go and then once I get the glue set and the leather back on the zipper I'll put a uh, clip back on just to temporarily hold it uh, so right now I've done this section here and the glue is uh, already tacky so it's ready for me to press down what I do is I put the glue on the leather first the whole uh, underfold the whole hem and then I'll put glue along the edge of the zipper but away from the, 
the teeth of the zipper so that I don't get excess glue at the front where the leather is not covered and I can gradually work the leather closer to the zipper so it's not like it needs to be bound for extra strength it's just a, like, like a tack a temporary tacking that's why I'm not worried about gluing if there's not glue uh, far enough close to the, uh, the zipper that's not a problem because what's actually going to hold the zipper in is the, the, the thread from the uh, sewing okay now the zipper has been glued in with the contact cement the leather contact cement I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours for the glue to cure reason being it's not so much for it to cure the whole the zipper in mainly the cure so that when I sew it it doesn't gum up my my needle on my machine so I'll, I'll just let this sit and then uh, in 24 hours I'll come back take the clips off stitch this down as I said before this piece and then I'll finish up with actually sewing this down to the back part of the zipper with a fold, the seam fold right here, like so. And what I'll do is I'll catch the sew right where the previous stitch seam was, is where I'll fold it and I'll sew it and lay it down exactly like that like so remembering not to catch the leather that's underneath and then when you open it up it'll be it'll be kind of actually it'll be like like this that way you won't have a holes punched to the outside because this seam here is actually the flap seam, not the zipper stitch line. Okay, we're back at the uh, sewing machine and uh, the zipper the glue then uh, part of the uh, left side zipper has been sitting and curing for 24 hours as I said earlier uh, allowing it to cure is not so much to give it more uh, security since I'm going to be stitching it in anyway it's more so that the glue now that it's cured uh, it's not tacky or wet so it's uh, less likelihood that it's going to gum up the needle when I start stitching. So what I'll do now is remove the uh, clamps that I just had on it just to help hold it in place while the glue was, uh, was setting up. I'll take those off now and then I'll begin to uh, stitch. Okay, I've taken the, uh, the clips off and uh, I'm going to sew the inner side of the jacket to the zipper. Um, it's a little different from the right side because you notice here that actually this uh, male portion of the, of the snap is closer to the zipper because it doesn't have a flap where on this side here on, on the left side it's it's backed off because the flap is away from the zipper right now but, but later on when I actually after I get this inner part so and so this portion here to the back of the zipper then you'll notice that I have to uh, work around the female portion of the snap but that's going to be uh, after I get the front part of the uh, zipper secured. 
to the jacket. Okay, now you start to securing it and sewing the zipper in using the same stitch hole from the previous stitches that held the old zipper in. As I said before, it's slow and steady. Okay, now close to the, the bottom of the zipper and what I'll do is once I get down to the end, I'll do a back stitch to help uh, reinforce the uh, area where the zipper will take the most uh, pressure from uh, opening and closing and keeping it secure. And on my machine, it's, since I don't have a, a reverse uh, throttle switch, what I do is uh, turn, just swing the uh, material around with the leather and just stitch back up the line again ensuring that there's nothing caught underneath and just sti stitch back up uh, maybe a half an inch you can always go back and do another uh, another row at the bottom and that's it the zipper is now secure what I'll do is also do a back stitch at the top. Okay, now that the zipper is secured on the uh, top side of the zipper on the, on the left, left hand side, I'll go ahead and just give the zipper a trial run to make sure that the teeth line up and that the zipper zips up. And everything lines up. The stops are pretty close. They're actually right across from each other. The bottom uh, bar here is lined up. The zipper is laying down. So the next step now is to get this flap down on this part of the zipper, like so. So I'll take it to the prep table and uh, We'll go ahead and start uh, gluing and pinning and I'll let this sit because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this a real sharp hard edge like so so that when I, I lay it down with the, the zipper open it'll be a nice neat straight line stitch and that way when it's closed down it'll lay down nice and securely. Okay, back at the, uh, the prep table and now we're going to work on getting this flap glued up and in position to prepare for the next stage of sewing. So I'm going to use the adhesive, apply it with my Q-tip, and I'll be working along this edge here. And then what I'll do is I want a real sharp edge. And then once it's folded under and it sets, 
then after 24 hours I'll go ahead and stitch this to the back side of the zipper and then we'll be done okay so what I'm doing is gluing down this flap here where the stitch edge was before I broke the stitches so what I'm doing is I'm actually putting glue on both sides doesn't have to be really neat because uh, actually when it's sewn this will be folded down to the back of the zipper but you don't want to put too much too far out because it might cause a hang up uh, with um, the material or the leather fabric um, cause some puckering so you know kind of use it where the two halves the two uh, pieces meet the fold over or the hem where they meet and put it on sparingly because actually underneath this the flesh side of this leather on top of the grain side is actually some felt um, and it's soaking up the leather the, the glue pretty good so once you get it laid down you let it sit actually th this glue was actually uh, kind of tacky already because <laughs> some of the air has gotten to uh, the glue that's in the can and that, that's not a bad thing uh, you just don't want too much air to get uh, in the can um, a couple nights ago I finished this side of the zipper and left the lid off for a couple of hours and I realized oh, I think I left the lid off so when I came down it's it's still runny not pouring you know but it's nice and uh, kind of gluten like so that uh, you don't have to wait as long for it to become tacky some crafts crafts folks they actually want it actually thicker than this and they pour it into a jar and they use a big brush to, to, to slide it on and then almost a half a minute after it's on it's tacky enough to the touch so this is ready to fold down so what I'm doing I'm actually looking where my previous stitch line was and I'm folding it right on that stitch line because that's where I'm going to actually sew right along that edge and when I sew I'm going to be sewing from this side the back side so I can actually see where my needle's going versus sewing from the top side and missing the edge so just fold it down all the way down for a nice tight straight sharp edge and then after this is done then you tack it with some glue to where you want to sew the two pieces together but I'm going to let this sit and cure and then at 24 hours I'll go and tack this down with glue let that sit and then come back and sew it sew it down like so at the very edge okay after uh, securing this zipper in on the left side I've determined that the fold that I was going to put here and sew it down at the very edge of this is going to cause a, this to bulk up so what I'm going to end up doing is cutting the seam stitch here separating this flap here and then sewing the flap down to the back of the zipper and then 
running double stitch back down this the edges here that way when I lay this back down this on the outside of the jacket and it'd be nice and smooth and it'll be connected it was going to cause too much bulk to try to put that on the edge so like like so and then bring it over even with it being such a so close because it's almost like a lip there versus it laying down like that so that's uh, what you do when you when you when you're crafting designing fabricating you determine okay what needs to be adjusted so it's going to take a little more time but it's going to come out with a better look on the outside and that's basically the way the manufacturer did it um, they had it laying down and they stitched it the flap on and then it appears that they stitch the outside of the jacket to the flap so I'm just going to reverse the process break the stitches here up at this stitch line here separate these two pieces lay it down stitch it and then lay it back that way and stitch it and stitch it back down on the original two stitch lines okay now I've uh, working on the modification taking that flap out and uh, what I'm going to do now that I have the flap out, no need to cut down the bottom because the zipper stops down here is so the zipper flap to the, to the flap like so and what I'll do I'll just use the same um, stitch hole and uh, run it down here stitch this and then come back and then stitch that back down like so so that when it's open up everything matches and it's laid laid flush so it'll lay down like so okay so the next thing is to get to the saw machine after I glue things up a little bit and uh, sew this down to that and then sew this back to that Okay, back at this this project here. Uh, like I said uh, previously, I decided that instead of trying to uh, keep this sewn together and folding it and sewing along this, realizing it's going to cause so much bulk, what I'm going to do is glue this down and open it up and then just sew down this seam here and then once I get this secured I'm going to go ahead and close it back up this way over here like so okay now what I'm going to, going to do and what I'm doing right now actually is uh, gluing the flat that I separated from the outside of the jacket I'm gluing that actually to the back side of the zipper and I'm gluing in stages so the glue line stays off the part of the zipper that you actually can see even though this is actually this is the back side of the zipper but when the jacket is unzippered and just on, uh, when it's open, 
you can see uh, parts of the zipper so I don't want glue uh, residue to be visible when I wear the jacket open. So that's why I'm staying on the back end of the zipper teeth but just putting enough glue close enough to when I lay the flap down it lines up uh, close to the zipper teeth without uh, interfering with the zipper teeth when the zipper pull is slid up and down. Okay now we're back at the saw machine. Uh, the left side of the zipper flap has been glued in, set for 24 hours. So now we're going to go ahead and secure the zipper flap to the back side of the zipper. So what we're going to do is sew the zipper zipper down along the, the edge of the stitch that was sewn in to initially keep the new zipper in right along this edge right here making sure that everything underneath is flat and then making sure that that the front part of the flap is back and out of the way. All you want to sew is the front part of the flap to the zipper. So you have to ensure that all this leather is out of the way. And as I said before, make sure you have enough excess prior to starting your sewing for the top thread so it doesn't pull back through the, uh, the eye of the needle. Line it up. Straighten it up. Pull anything from behind it. Take a look. And start stitching. Right along that lip. continue up from the bottom to the top.
Okay. Now I've got the zipper in, secured, it's straight. The inner flap is sewn to the zipper. The right side of the jacket is sewn to the zipper. Now finish up with uh, stitching these two flaps together from the bottom to the top also we turning these two ends together the bottom end and the top end and what I'll do is more than likely secure the ends up more than likely I'll hand sew the ends before I machine so the two flat pieces together so I'll start fix the bottom here by hand tack that back down and then fix the top and then it's just a matter of sewing this together two rows of stitches straight stitches
come on. Don't fuck around here. Don't bullshit me, people. Come on. Okay, I was hand stitched where I opened the stitch up to get to this flap to be able to fold the flap back prior to sawing the back end of the zipper. Now I've hand stitched from here to here to this edge and I'm lining up this edge so that when I stitch these two pieces of the flap back together it lines up on the outside. So all I've got left to do here is stitch this section right here together and it's almost like a a whip stitch uh, because I don't have a a curved needle I'm just catching the very lip the ends of both edges and then feeding it through like so and you're doing it you know space by space not too close together because you don't want to rip the leather the leather is thin this is this is garment leather versus uh, thick cowhide so you work it together it takes a little force once you get it through, grab it, and then you can use your pliers to pull the needle through. And watch where your needle goes through. Uh, you don't want it to go back, go through the loop just yet. You use go back, you go through the loop when you're doing the end stitch as a as an overhand knot. You just tug on it, don't tug too hard. Just tug on it enough to get the stitches to grab, to hold, and then when you press it out with your hand, it lays back down as if it was machine sewed. Like so. And I've already tried a test on a zipper to make sure that everything's lined up and not in the way okay and then what as you can see it's, it's laying down good these two pieces be together and then the outside flat be laid down nice and smooth with no puffering in it okay got the bottom inside ends connected and now I'm going to go ahead and uh, work this collar uh, back in. 
this will be uh, going to work this edge back up underneath this flap here and do a uh, a whip stitch basically to get this little section back in back in here and then everything from here on down or up will be machine stitched I just need to catch this corner here and then I'll decide whether I can stitch around this snap I'm gonna need to uh, I'll be able to stitch around this snap here to close it off I may just uh, leave it unsnapped leave the snap in and then feel my way around it once I've closed everything off but for now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand stitch this little area right here okay I'm at the top of the uh, the jacket here with the collar collar flap and what I'm doing is hand stitching where I cut the stitches to get the zipper in and what I'm doing is I'm poking that piece of leather in so I can catch it as I hand stitch this this here I'm doing this so that this part of the uh, flap up near the collar stays secure when I stitch the two pieces of the flap together all the way up and down the zipper so it's just a matter of uh, back and forth hand stitch catching the leather then you want to stay tucked poking it in like so so actually you're catching two layers of leather as you go back and forth now you go back down keep your stitches close together but not so close where you're you're actually going back through the same hole you came up under and when you pull sometimes you hear a pop that's the, actually the previous stitch that didn't set all the way down that you're pulling down tautly same thing press the leather in so you're catching it then come back up like so back up trying to stay in the uh, the track where machine stitch was before you uh, actually pulled it broke the stitch to get the zipper in and then back down and see so, yeah, as you see when it lays down and it's open it's smooth Okay, now I've got the, the top collar stitched back and I've got the bottom stitched back. So now everything else is uh, a machine, machine stitch. So what I'll do now is start to, start to glue up the two edges, let them sit for 24 hours. Uh, as I said, to let the, the glue cure, but not so much to cure the to hold it in securely, the two pieces, 
mainly the cure so when I start stitching with the machine it doesn't gum up my uh, my sewing needle in my machine so I'll start stitching start gluing both both sides and I'll glue from the top down and if I need to stretch once I get down to the bottom I'll just stretch the leather in place versus from the bottom up as far as gluing and securing that way if I'm if it's off a little bit give it like that like to have it off on the bottom versus up the top around your neck but it's it's not going to be off because uh, everything is lined up zippers lined up the restitch hand stitch is lined up top and bottom so the flaps going to be lined up okay now we're going to start the uh, gluing up process and we'll just go ahead and put some leather glue along both sides of the edge and we'll do it in increments and I'm looking at that that snap there the back side of the snap that's going to be uh, the last thing that's going to be done as far as completing this replacement zipper pro project here and I'm going to save that for last because what I'm going to do is once I get everything glued and stitched then I'm going to pop that that snap back into this hole here and then what I'll do is glue around the edge of that hole once it's through glue it before it's through and then once I put the head of the snap back through that part of the leather and glue will adhere to this part over here but for now I'm just going down and putting some contact cement up and down the edge flap and it's already the glue is already setting up and kind of tacky already so it's not runny so I'll just let it sit for a couple seconds and then I'll go ahead and put the two pieces together once you feel that it's tacky and I'm starting up here at the top of the collar like so those two pieces edges together like so and then let's bring it on down put the two edges together I'll grab that snap bring that through later I can bring that through pop it through I don't want to pop that through now because it's going to make not give me as much flexibility to work around it when I'm uh, machine stitch here and along here if I was to pop it through it make the leather tighter so I'll pop it through last so bring these pieces together edges edge to edge like so and continue on down the length the jacket okay now I'm down toward the edge the end of the uh, 
flap cover or the flap that covers the zipper and I'm just gluing up so that I can sew up in 24 hours and that will be the completion of the replacement of the zipper. Zippers in. Now it's just a matter of uh, getting it flat closed up. Okay, I've got the uh, the two halves of the flat glued up and I'm just waiting uh, for about 24 hours for it to cure and then I'll go ahead and uh, remove these clips and stitch two straight stitch rows up the, the front of the, the, uh, the jacket on the flap cover here. There's a stitch here on the outer close to the edge and then there's an inner straight stitch that's here. They both run parallel to each other and uh, I'll start the stitch down here because I didn't have to break the stitch down by the snaps. I'll start it here, both, both rows, one at a time, up along here. Then I'll cut around this corner and go over to here. And then the second row will be parallel and I'll stay in the stitch line here that's already there from the uh, manufacturer's uh, stitching and then that'll be it okay so now we're here at the final final stages of uh, completing this uh, replacement of the zipper the zipper has been put in has been secured on both sides sewn in and now we're going to go ahead and uh, stitch the flap that covers the zipper. Stitch the two rows of stitching down the zipper from the top of the collar all the way down to the waist, the end of the zipper. So uh, what we'll do is start removing these clips. These clips were just a... Okay. Now that I've got the, the flap glued together and taken the, uh, the clips off that were just holding it in place, I'm now going to sew down the two seam lines starting at the top and finishing up at the bottom. Okay, we're going to start the first row of stitching and I usually want like to start from the, the top of something to the bottom but the feed feeds away the material away from me toward the back of the machine so in order to keep my top stitch on top I'm going to start at the bottom of the jacket around the waist so that it pulls the material away from me as I work the stitch up toward the top, toward the collar. So we'll start this first row here, this outer row, and we'll start stitching right here at this waist uh, waistline. Okay, the pressure foot's sitting up a little bit higher because there's a little bulk here. But what you do is just go ahead and guide the guide it through one stitch at a time and stay in 
the stitch line from the previous zipper stitch and just work your way all the way up the length of the zipper. Let's go on nice and slow and steady. Continue to sew up the length of the inner row of this guy. I let the machine actually pull the material. You're just guiding with your with your hands. So it pulls kind of straight versus on an angle. Pulling out your uh, previous uh, thread, any excess or pieces that are left there from the previous stitches that you cut, and you're taking the zipper out, the old zipper. Let's move those out the way, so you don't want those trapped, trapped under your new stitches you're putting in, and your black thread on black leather. Sometimes it's hard to see until you get right over it with the stitches on what you like from your machine. If there's any left that's left that you did have to sew down, you can pull those out with your finger or pick them with your with your nippers. It's easy. Work your way up. Staying in the stitch line. Now, here is where it's going to get tight around this foot here but that's why I have a zipper foot on here because it's narrower than a regular 
a pressure foot and I can work my way around this snap. Now as I said earlier I'm going to pull this snap through, work this snap through around the hole that's here in another after I stitch around it and then once I pull it through, actually before I pull it through I'm going to put some glue on the inside so that when the snap comes through this glue that's on the inside will be glued down to the uh, other side of the leather that's on the other side of the uh, inner side of the snap. So let's just work our way around and the pressure foot might lift up a bit as it rides over the, the snap. That wasn't too bad. Okay. Okay, and here's where you turn the corner. And bring that all the way over. straight and slow. Okay. Make like a looks like a rectangle here coming up to this other corner here with the collar. And then you do a back stitch. Keep your needle down. Move your leather around. Like so. Back, stitch it back down that triangle. to the stitch you went over it's either going to be uh, a double stitch if you look at it real fine or it's going to be cutting into you the stitch that you actually uh, laid down first so that's it flaps down zippers in only thing left to do is do a back stitch here where I started it. And uh, I'll do a back stitch going down on top of what I laid down earlier from the top to the bottom on this one. Both rows. Like so. Get your thread lined up. Get yourself some excess. Way previous so it doesn't get sewn down what you're gonna sew now and do a back stitch down at the bottom
Okay, I'm back at the uh, prep table. And uh, the last step here is for me to glue this uh, leather down around the snap. So what I'll do is take the glue. The hole is already there, so what I'm going to do is uh, just put some adhesive in the hole around the snap. Actually, Put some glue actually around here so when I pull the snap through it has something to stick to and then also the glue that I put inside will keep the leather down On the inside around the back of the snap so what I'll do is go ahead and work that snap through through the hole like so down a ladder against the, the glue that's on the inside to help hold all that down around the snap and then take uh, something to help push just push it down itself around so like so. And that's it. Let the glue set up. It. It's finished. New zipper. Replace the old broken zipper. back in place stitching in place no holes put in where there wasn't any holes supposed to be okay here's the finish jacket
with the new zipper installed. Slide fastener in. Flaps sewn back on. Snaps put back in place. Everything just lays down nice and smooth. Complete.